Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Disco Elysium. I'm Colonel RPG, as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today, as I think we f Oh, Volition Challenging. I think we found somebody from our life. Uh, last episode we talked to, I don't know, a family member, a loved one? I doubt it's a loved one, or maybe, I don't know. Let's see, Volition Challenge over here. It's a white check, so we can try it again. Let's ring on the Sleepstream SCA. Whatever she says, it can't hurt you. You're a different person now. Stronger, healthier, and... Alright, maybe not healthier, but it's a bonus that you've drank so hard you can't remember any of your past relationships. Oblivion's the ace in your corner. I'm gonna call her again, press the doorbell in the Sleepstream SCA. There's a light buzz as you press the doorbell, waiting for her to answer the call. It's cold outside, and you can hear the wind blowing into the speaker. Yes, hello, this is Tricentennial Helectrix. It's the same voice you heard before. Have you come to place an order? Uh... Yeah, the last time we talked there was some confusion. You got me mixed up with someone else. I'm still gonna try to push that. Uh, just to try to keep up the appearances here. My god! Here come the bad vibes again. Relax, distance yourself from it. Please don't hang up, I just wanna explain myself. Before you can finish your sentence, the voice continues speaking. It's you! My god, I didn't think I would hear your voice again. Oh. Wait, is she? <laughs> That's a reaction speed? This is a recording, isn't it? It's the, the, the little thing that they mentioned, the, uh, the wax cylinder. I fear I didn't actually connect that. I thought it was just a description, but it might be a wax cylinder. Didn't you already say that the last time we talked? Michelle... Just please. Even her breathing, the way her voice drops when she finishes the sentence, sounds exactly the same. Why did you even call? I don't understand. You've been gone for months, she continues. I thought you didn't care. It doesn't matter what I say, you're just going to continue, right? The voice from the intercom doesn't answer, but you can hear her breathing. Wind blows into the microphone again, crackling and echoing in the, bo in the box. Is it over? Can we talk now? Ever since I came to work here, it's been different. As if my mind's been wiped clean. Oh. It's not a recording. It's so nice, she says. It's so nice to be able to finally forget about you. And then it hits you. No, she is a recording. I, I forgot that she said that. I thought she didn't. She tries again not to cry and still doesn't succeed completely. Her quiet sobs sound old and distance, distant, as if her voice is being played off a wax cylinder. Real or not, your mirror neurons react. It feels painful to be listening to this. Why does it still feel like it's my fault? Hmm. I don't know what kind of world this is. It could be magic for all I know. <laughs> it's just a recording and here I thought... Her sound melts into the static from a long-distance phone call. From time to time you can hear people talking in the distance but can't make out any words. There, This is where you hung up the, the call the last time, but the recording is still going. I'm gonna keep listening. A phone rings in the office with an old-fashioned chime, and someone walks by in a pair of heels. The static is like a warm blanket wrapped around the sound. Is anyone there? No one replies, but the static grows stronger like rainfall. Then a female voice speaks out, completely different from the one before. Glorious in total, somehow, crawling inside your head. Her words are too cold to comprehend. She smells of sodium lights. This is my shivers? Sure. Uh, she smells, smells of sodium lights and rain streaks on car windows. Eyes like pilot lights watch your shape in dark hallways, guttering. And this is just what I feel? So, says Kim, the strange alien thought pattern ends. The lieutenant cuts in, inspecting the intercom. It was a recording trapped in the circuitry from some ancient tenant. This sometimes happens. Shall we conclude here? We have other mysteries to solve. Wait, so a recording trapped in the circuitry? Hmm, I don't have time to explain it to you now, right now. Maybe sometime later? He looks at the sea, almost wistful. Something weird just happened to me. 
then I gained experience as well. Don't take this the wrong way, but during our short stint working together, something weird is al almost always happening to you. That is true. My logic, that's an easy logic. <laughs> okay, let's leave. Let's not, let's not mess around with this for right now. Let's see what this is all about, and we're going to the sea. I don't know what this is. You see a set of tire tracks in the brown sludge that cover the plasma mosaic. Hmm. A white check. Okay, let's try to reconstruct the moment. Uh, mm, let's not do that right now. Let's first ask why I am looking at this. Cop habit. You look at everything. I do. Also, role-playing game. This isn't case-related, you think. Uh, an easy check, although that might be a, a, a lie. What kind of vehicle do drove through here? I'm going to ask to myself. Hard to say. Your vision is blurred and you are having difficulty concentrating thanks to your relentless hangover. Okay, let's do a check over here. I failed. Oh, you lied to me. I can check it again if I increase that. Uh, if it, this is not crime related then, or not related to the case, then it doesn't really matter for the moment. Uh, there's tire tracks over here. That's where the body is. Okay, we made it back here. No, no. How is that not case related, though, if the body is over here? There are several footprints in the mud left by work boots. Anywhere from 6 to 12 pairs have walked here. And I... What kind of boots? Let's see. Heavy worker's boots. With reinforced toes and hobnails. All over the yard. Isn't this something an industrial worker would wear? Isn't that something? Yes, that is indeed something. Lieutenant, worker's boot tracks. Yeah, he's, he knows what's up. This is not from when the crime happened. Noted. The lieutenant takes out his little notebook. Okay, let's get an exact count over here and see if we can succeed at that. We did succeed! Maybe more than 12! No, eight pairs of boots have shuffled back and forth in the mud. Uh, go over them one by one. Let's see. Standard work boot, steel reinforced toes, no 46. Or number! You need a dot there. Otherwise it's not an abbreviation. At least I think that's the rule in English. Uh, anyway, standard work boot, still reinforced, number 44. Hobnailed work boot, still reinforced, number 43. Standard work boot, no, number 45 and 46. So these are all big numbers. Like, these are all really big numbers. Uh, these are men of uh, 170, uh, 170 centimeters height to up to 2 meters. Uh, somewhere, and even 170, that's still on the short side. Uh, somebody with a foot of this size and 170 height, that's uh, that's a big foot right there. <laughs> um, wait, should we cheese it? Oh, wait, the standard work boot, number 44 and... 40, wait, standard work boot? No, that's normal. You don't know. It's a miracle you can tell the prints apart as it is. The cold must have preserved them. Another standard work boot, still reinforced, toes, num uh, number 44. An aberration, light as air, even pace, same make of boot, but number 41. Yeah, I'm going to tell the gender from the... Well, actually, they could. you could make a good guess based on the cut of the boot, but I don't know when this is from. Let's see. Impossible to tell. Could also have been an adult adolescent. The teenager would be a better word for that, because I don't really know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So let's go with the teenager. The gait is undeveloped. Oh, you can probably also tell the sort of pace that the, no, the weight distribution and stuff. Maybe, if you're really good at it. Um, I'm pretty good at this, ain't I? <laughs> you're not bad. It's as if the whole world darkens. Everything else has a thin film of unimportance on it, and the tracks burn in the middle of it in a strange, beautiful way. They do indeed. Count the rest. Number seven, the glowing outline of a standard work boot, number 46. Actually, number 41. If you're an adolescent, number 41. I don't know what numbers these are, because they could be anything. I wear number... I wear 41. I've been I've been wearing 41 since I was, well, an adolescent, I guess. Because um, that's when I stopped going. <laughs> no, not really. I guess at eight, I was still a teenager at 18, but still. Um, yeah, and I'm uh, 170 centimeters tall. 169, but I... I don't want to be crass. The glowing outline of a standard number 46, but the imprints are twice as deep as the others. The weight exceeds 200 kilograms. In reality, a 200... Because it's squared. 
it it, it would ex it wouldn't be 200 it would be 140 uh if you're thinking the other ones are 100 kilograms i think that's how it works like you you because of surface tension it's squared because it's based on square root of your thing if you have like a meter um if you have like a building that is a meter a square meter and the building is a ton then the uh, the pressure that you're applying yeah i'm not i'm not yeah the pressure that you're applying per square meter i'm not sure if i'm right on that Either way, it doesn't really matter. I, that's not that relevant, I don't think. And yet another... I think the game is going to do all the detective work on, the, on those little regards. Because it's all skill checks, which I am absolutely a fan of. Uh, and yet I still will commentate on it, though. And say nonsense and bad things, most likely. Because, yeah, feel free to correct me on that one if it's squared. I think it is. Anyway, yet another standard work boot over here, number 44. There's an aberration in the pattern of the sole, however. The right sole is smoother, more worn. Which would be... Maybe a driver? I don't know. I suppose that could be a thing. How many? The lieutenant has been tracking your eyes, uh, your eye movements. Eight. Eight. I was pretty off then. I counted 20. <laughs> way off. Way... Uh, if I say that, I'm probably going to throw myself backwards into a that kid or something and kill him. Uh, this Also, yeah, that's a thing that's happening right now. What the kid is doing. Right. Okay. We'll deal with that later. The same guys you, uh, the same guys are coming, going back and forth, and that's why you count to twenty. That's smart. That's good. I never got the hang of it. Hyperopia. He points on his uh, to his app. Wait, hyperopia? That's not a thing. He points to his glasses. Do you see anything out of the ordinary? Is that a thing? Hyperopia? I thought there were only two things that you could have: myopia and the other one that's definitely not called hyperopia. And that's the one that I have. And a lot of people do as well. I think myopia is a little bit more common. I'm not sure. Either way, he has the opposite of myopia. But it probably is. I mean, there's there's pathologies for everything. So let's see. Do you see anything anything out of the ordinary? I do. The aberration doesn't really matter. The light step is a little bit of a thing. And apparently these are all big feet that we have here. We wear number 57. Uh, Yeah. That is a heavy one as well. Although that probably... Uh, I don't know how common it is for people to have this sort of weight it depends a lot on on where we are if we were for example in japan this would be just completely out of the ordinary there's a very very low in the rate of incidence of uh of um obesity because uh, it's, it's not gonna be a giant because if you're like two meters how 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 tall would you have to be to weigh 200 kilograms and still not be obese i think it'd be, need to be like two meters and a lot anyway light step let's go with that one a human or a, a human? Definitely a human. A woman or a kid? I don't think it's a woman. I'm like. It could be though. Could be a kid. I don't think there's any way to be sure. Yeah, I don't know any woman that wears um, more than forty. I don't know any woman that wears forty. But then again, you know how many of the women I know I go around asking about their <laughs> foot size. Uh, yeah, but women tend, statistically speaking, to have uh, smaller feet. Of course, there's women with, with uh, bigger feet. I just don't know them. <laughs> so they can't be... They, can, they, uh, they, just, they can't exist. I don't think there's any way to tell. Understood. Anything else? Yeah, I have you one. 200 kilogram imprint. 200? He thinks for a moment. Could it be the combined weight of two people, one carrying the other, who's tied up? Let's say a heavily built worker carrying a similarly built soon-to-be-dead man. Uh, it could be, but I find that unlikely. Why would so many people be here and only one of them carrying another person the same weight as they are? Hmm, anyway, and this is also conf this also confirms that this is from the crime scene. It's been here for a week or three days, but still, eh, probably would be very unfresh. He might be right, says my visual calculus. 200 kilograms of living weight is unlikely. Well, I guess you know better than I do. Uh, visual calculus. Yeah, w uh, one of them was carrying him over. Maybe it was a giant. <laughs> a giant would be foot 50-something. Um, it could have been an extremely obese person. From here, the boots... He says, Kim says, The boots the victim wears... 
The lieutenant stops mid-sentence. A sudden change in wind direction blows the stench of rotting meat right in your face. He tries to continue. It's bad. Very bad. Before you can heave, the wind changes direction again. The greenhouse plastic flapping in its gust. That's the wrong gets. He appears to be wearing... Oh, Kim says. He appears to be wearing some kind of armored boots. I can't see any exotic prints here. His face muscle, uh, muscles twitch. He says, someone had to carry him. Are any of the other prints deep enough? My god, what was that? I think that is the... The meat. The, I think that's the body. No, I don't think so. Nabi's person is becoming less likely. Hmm. One of them was carrying him over? Possibly, yes. The lieutenant marks something down in his notebook. And there's an aberration here. Which is an interesting word to use in the, at the best of times. I don't know what... that That's probably lost in translation. I'm pretty sure this game is not written by native speakers. It is correct. It's the correct term. It's just... It's weird that we use it. One soul is smoother than the other. Interesting. Let's name it Odd Soul. Yes, let's give it a name where we didn't give a name to any of the other ones. Do you have any ideas, Lieutenant? Uh, someone operating a workbench with a pedal, like a joiner at the harbor? He thinks for a second. Maybe a drummer? No, drummers... No, the, you, you don't know drums, Kim. Shut up. He regrets it the moment he says it. A drummer? That's stupid. Yes. Yes, it is. Because they use both feet. And about as, as, as frequently, in fact. Well, in fact, the left feet... Did we know... Well, it depends on how the drummer plays, of course. One soul. It doesn't so it doesn't say the soul, which soul it is. But yeah, the, the it depends on what music you play, evidently. But uh, your left foot, or your rather your l off foot, but if you're right-handed or right-footed, uh, you'd be your left foot. That one would be for the little hi hat, and uh, I say little could be big, but for the hi hat, and that one is uh, usually you know, it's often seen as as the, the the sort of tempo thingy. So it it, it does get beaten a lot, but it, they don't. They, they're not going to come here with drumming shoes. What is this? <laughs> a drummer, that's stupid. Let's say it. A drummer's only... A drummer's... Mm -hmm, I'm sure. With the it's, that's not the right one. Only uses their right foot for the kick drum. Yes, you dummy, and they use their left foot for the pie hat, you dumb. He explains and then stops and looks at the hole in the mud. You're right. It's stupid. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. I like him. He's nice. Perhaps it could be a driver. Yes! I came to that conclusion. See, I like him more. He's coming to the same conclusions I came to. <laughs> a driver would wear out their right shoe before the left. The accelerator is on the right. Yes, and that is one of the reasons why the... Uh, well, not the only reason, but... One of the reasons why the accelerator uh, pedal is often of a different grip. Grip. The grip, not grip. Grip to the other pedals. And uh, that's because of the, the, the frequency of use and stuff like that. Uh, I, I am led to believe. So... I was actually thinking the exact same thing. He doesn't seem to hear you, looking south toward the traffic jam instead. The machines are silent, the engines all turned off. He, sh he says, we should keep our eyes open around the traffic jam, see whether anyone strikes out as a potential suspect. It seems pr prudent, no? Yes, prudent indeed. Hmm. The lieutenant writes the information down in his notebook, then reverts to the tracks in the mud. How old do you think these tracks are? A week, maybe? Seven days would fit a time frame provided to us by the caller who reported the hanging. It is not impossible. How do you know? I'm gonna ask. And he says, I pulled last week's forecast for coastal Ravichol. Seven days below freezing. The day before the day of his hanging was the last warm day. Oh, that's right. This is all frozen, so it, it does change the way the ground works. My visual calculus says correct again. Sub-zero temperatures would preserve the tracks in a good state. The, com the commotion here could have taken a place, taken place a week ago. So what do you think happened here? I'm going to ask. And he says, what do you think? A mob of people brought something heavy to the tree. One of them was carrying the victim. They shuffled around, especially under the tree. And then after hoisting him up, they stood in a semicircle facing his direction. At first glance, this appears to be a lynching. Yep, yeah, it does appear to be that. Uh, we, we've been through all of it. Okay, my care, my thing is... Uh, sm smells like spoiled meat and curdled dairy. A human being decomposes. Yes, a human being does decompose. Let's see what we have over here. That would be magnesium. Money. I definitely 
Okay, let's have a chat with the kid. Hey. They didn't talk to you immediately. Oh, he's, he's actually... No, he's just picking up rocks. Oh, yeah? Kondo's got this! Somebody else was talking. The boy throwing rocks at the dead body can't be older than 12. If there was ever such a thing as an ugly kid, then this is it. Oh, there was ever such a thing as an ugly kid. He's almost exquisite in his ugliness, like a gremlin. Oh, yeah. Never could be, Kuno. Oh, that's the other kid. That's the other kid that, that we saw, I think. This is... I don't understand what's going on, but it is something. Yells the other kid behind the fence. Yes, yes. Um. Hey, a moment of your time, please. Can't talk, pig. Shit's coming up strong. Throwing rocks. Shit coming up strong. That sounds good. Joyous. You sound. You should hang out with this kid and see what that juicy shit is all about. Why is what the heck is my electrochemistry talking about? Shut up. A juicy what now? I mean drugs. The kids. Oh no. That's me asking myself. I mean drugs, says my electrochemistry. The kid's on drugs. Oh. Yeah, Kuno. Ride the lightning, Kuno. Kuno's riding a sea. He wipes sweat from his brow and sends another rock flying. The rake, Kuno. You should throw the rake at him, Kuno. The fuck does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno's not a gardener. He's, he's uh, Irish, I think. I think that's what the accent is. Are your kids siblings? The fuck are you talking about? He throws another rock. He's calling us f***ers, Kuno. He says we're fucking each other. Are you... That's not what it means. <laughs> uh... Hey, kid, do you want to hang out? I'm not a narc. No, actually, I, sh I don't think I should pursue this. Uh, also, I'm not a narc is lovely to say. It's just at the best of times. Um, Kim, what do we do? We shouldn't do anything. I don't tempt such forces. What forces? You will see. D w will, uh, will I? Kid, do you want to hang out? Fuck no! Kuno doesn't buy that shit! Fucking entrapment shit! <laughs> uh, look, I have questions for you. Alright, entertain the Kuno. Show me what she got. What she got there? What she got, huh? Show me what she got! The body. What, what do you know about it? Shitload pig, that's what your what's your question? Don't tell the pig shit, Kuno. Hey Kim, help me out here. What do you what do you want to know? If I were to want if I were to want to waste my time, which I do not, I would ask them who he is, how he got there, and the usual. You have no idea what the usual is though. It just ask whatever comes to mind. Um Have you seen anyone suspicious around? Just a couple of pigs sniffing around in the dirt. That seems pretty fucking suspicious to Kuno. Yeah, you tell that Fagari, Kuno. Do you know how he got up there? Probably climbed. Kuno was busy down the road when that shit went down. So you didn't see any it happening? You heard Kuno. Kuno wasn't even in Martinez. Kuno wasn't in Re wasn't in Ravachol. He pulled puffs himself up. Kuno wasn't regional. Okay, where did you go then? I don't know, some fucking... He looks around, trying to come up with something. M mask or, I, I don't know, some other place. Night City! Kuno was in fucking Night City! There is no Night City anywhere, says my encyclopedia. I'm glad to know that. That sounds like the name of a city in some Pulp Fiction novel. That's a fictional name. Night City doesn't exist. Why you gotta be riding Kuno's ass? You haven't been where Kuno's been. You haven't been in Kuno's head. You wanna know where Kuno was? You wanna know what Kuno's been fucking up to? Don't tell him that, Kuno. It's lame. It's not fucking lame. Kuno's building Kuno's city. Night city. Rage city. The city of rage. That's it. And, and the city of rage. It's not lame. Lame. That's the name of Kuno's city, bitch. Get the fuck off Kuno's back. This shit ain't about what. About that, he says. Do you know who he was? Kuno's fuck imp. He picks up a rock. Kuno uses the fuck imp for target park practice. Okay, more on this later. Right now, let's talk about something else. You're testing Kuno's patient here. Get lost, says Kuno S. <laughs> it's just our friend, so I guess that's that's what it's all about. We, that's an interesting way of naming her. 
Um, so let's see. I want to discuss the body with you again uh, about the crime scene. Your kids often play in this yard. No, I don't want. I'm not gonna ask Luis Kuno. Yeah, do you often play in this yard? Right, pig. This is where Kuno plays with his little wooden choo choo. Fuck, do you want with it? I might have questions later. For now, let's talk about something else. I'll see you later. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Yep. I'm sure you don't. Hey. Right in the dick, Kuno! Get him right in the dick! That's her. Kuno, the pig's getting pretty close to me. Come to snuff my shit out, I think. I definitely have not. Take one step closer, please. No, I'm gonna take one step closer. I'm Looks not gonna like say it's time for me to go, Kuno. Pigs come to take me in. I just want to ask you some questions. I'm going away for a long, long time, Kuno. Going away for life. What's going on there? Fuck, are you trying to pull, pig? Child converse with me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm gonna... I need to write this down because I need to tell them that to the next kid I see. Ever, at all. Whatever kid it is. Um, what are... Yeah, what are those strange words you use, girl? I come from the woods, Kuta Vitu. You don't want to go there with me. You don't want to see what I've seen. That's... That's Finnish. Did she speak? Did I? Ah, oh, that's Finnish, isn't it? I don't. I wouldn't know though. It could be. Um, I don't actually know what language Ireland has other than English. There's another language, and I don't know it. It could be that as well. Yeah, she's also redheaded, so it could be. I don't know. Don't be traumatizing, eh? Get the fuck out of here! <clears throat> the voice actors had a uh, way too much fun <laughs> recording these lines. They were pretty cool. Let's see, this trash container is locked. The sib the sliding lid has a padlock that says whirling in rags. There's something in there, not necessarily connected to the case, but still. Hey, why am I looking at you, trash container? You're just a trash container. The body, says the trash container, is downwind from here. Maybe you prefer the smell of garbage to the smell of death? I'm gonna keep the hunch to myself. The lieutenant leans in to inspect the lock. How do we open the lock or how do we get the lock open? We could try using a pry bar. There's one in my motor carriage, or... Or... Or we could ask for a key from the manager of the Whirling in Rags. He probably has one. Sounds good. Let's, uh... Let's, we'll, we'll go to your carriage in a little bit. I think that was that cool machine on the other side. The letter R wears a crown and on the ribbon below. A light above descending. That's a, that's a, that's a logo, I think. That's what that's supposed to be. What is this? This kid's ladder is rickety, but still climbable. Yeah, not by me, though. I would imagine. Someone is trying to grow herbs in this greenhouse. Absolutely, it is. Definitely not uh, other herbs. And that's probably not at all what the kid is high on. This winch mechanism has been oxidizing for some years. An inconspicuous pile of roofing material. It Eternite. I do not know that. That's a thing. Uh, but we're also out of time for the day, so let's do a perception side check that's really hard to pull off next episode. For right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been uh, Disco Elysium. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.